We're only a few weeks into the year and traders on Wall Street bets have already lost millions of dollars. From one user 10xing his portfolio with Boeing's massive mishap, to another losing everything and getting forcefully evicted by law enforcement, we're gonna go over the iciest trades of the winter. Bulky Lies 6570 is someone who came to Wall Street bets with a pretty small portfolio. But Bulky Lie didn't let this stop him. On December 20th, Spy was gradually moving up for the day. Spy was up 5% for the month, but something fell off. Bulky Lie's spidey senses started tingling, and he decided to buy $250 worth of spy puts that expired the same day. $250 might not sound like much, but his total portfolio was only worth about $1,000. So this was a pretty big risk. There were only two and a half hours left till his puts expired worthless, and Spy was still standing strong. That was until the unexpected happened. Spy would quickly go from $475 down to just about $467. A 2% drop in Spy was great news for Bulky Lai, and his portfolio would go through the roof. An originally $250 position turned into more than $13,400. His total portfolio now sits at about $14,000. Let's just hope he didn't end up losing it though, because he wouldn't make any more posts to the subreddit. Spread Open Seuss is someone who shared a now deleted screenshot from another subreddit. Woke up to my 21 year old female landlord and police enforcing eviction. Boyfriend, 24 male, didn't tell me he didn't pay rent. Seems like he lost everything on crypto and meme stocks and I'm at a loss of what to do. Although it's fun to joke around with others in Wall Street bets, this particular story is no laughing matter. The original poster deleted her post and her username is blocked out. So. For the sake of this story, we'll refer to her as Emma. As previously stated, Emma woke up to an unpleasant surprise. After finding out that her boyfriend failed to pay the rent, she decided that it was time to do some investigating. Luckily enough, her boyfriend used the same username on all social media platforms, so it wasn't so hard to find him online. Emma's boyfriend would tell her that he was going to work, when, in reality, he would just chat with others on Discord and Reddit. He said that he was going to make, quote unquote, wife changing money soon. Emma's boyfriend would write DD on Twitter and Reddit and gain quite a bit of notoriety. However, Emma says that this due diligence was insane. He was someone who was studying children's books to look for supposed clues on upcoming plays. Before Thanksgiving, he told Emma that he lost his job, when in reality, he really quit and put his life savings into crypto altcoins. He then told Emma that he was going to a job interview in Florida. This might sound like a step in the right direction, but this was another lie. He was actually going to a meme stock convention that would end up costing them $1,800 collectively. On top of all of this, Emma would find out that he would post rude comments about her online. This is all just a really messed up story, and it gets even crazier knowing that he's likely still somewhere making posts to Reddit. This shows the importance of 1. Don't listen to random DD on the internet when they might be doing things like this behind the scenes. And two, if you're gonna be irresponsible with money, make sure you're not harming someone else while doing so. Elson Bro is a user who was a little bit too confident in AMD. On December 28th, he would drop over $14,000 on AMD calls that expired the next day. AMD was worth about $149, but he needed the stock price to rise to $150 to break even. AMD had risen about about 10% over the past 5 trading days, so Elzenbro was hoping AMD would continue rallying. 
Unfortunately, AMD would not continue its rally. In fact, it started dumping. He would share the following screenshot and informed us that his trade was made using his Roth IRA. Lost just about 14k in my Roth IRA Friday on my AMD YOLO, kicking myself because this was worth a little over 22k at open, but decided to hold during day. Next thing I know, boom, I let them expire worthless. 14k is a pretty big loss, but a few weeks before this post, Post, he would share the following screenshot, informing us that he made 20k in one week. Hopefully his portfolio is still green after the miscalculation with AMD. Trying to make money in the stock market is pretty difficult. One thing that seemingly always works though is claiming sign-up bonuses. Thanks to our sponsor, Bankrewards.io, they make it easy to find and redeem sign-up bonuses for a variety of different banks and brokerages. Moomoo and Chime offer over $100 in 5 free stocks for simply transferring $300. Let's be honest, that's basically free money if you're willing to sign up. That's all for our sponsor. If you're interested, check out the link in the description. Lwalker510 is a user who hasn't had much luck since joining Wall Street Bets. Send help, he says. Over the course of about three years, he managed to rack up about a quarter million in losses. Originally, he was in the green by tens of thousands of dollars. His portfolio would remain green until something switched in him on July 13th, 2021. He leveraged credit and took out personal loans. Since then, things just haven't been going so great. I've tried to move forward many times, but my confidence and will have been crushed, despite joining several rooms and investing in tools provided by really good traders. I feel like I need to get even before I get ahead. Hopefully L. Walker stops the risky trading and starts investing long term. On the bright side, Robinhood offers him $1 to learn about how he can retire with $1 million. Fosterion18 is someone who we've covered in the past. He's made over $10 million trading options and certainly has an insane history on Wall Street bets. In 2024, he would return not to Wall Street bets, but instead r slash dividends. He shows off his $800,000 a year dividend portfolio that he started back in August. Fosterion shows the importance of locking in gains and quitting while you're ahead. FarmPal is a user who shows the importance of being relentless and never giving up. FarmPal has been active on Wall Street bets for over 9 years now, but things would really take a turn over the past year. In April, he would deposit about 30k. He managed to grow his portfolio by about 25%, but this wouldn't last for long. He would make some bad investments and found his way back to the bottom. In June, he ended up growing his portfolio back to about 40k until it came crashing down to zero again in July. In August, he deposited about 40k and really started to make some bold moves. In only a week or two, he had reached six figures. This was a pretty big accomplishment. He could put this money into an index fund and get some pretty safe returns for the rest of his life, but obviously, he did not want to do this. He magically made some bad investments again and brought his portfolio to zero. September rolled around and he did the usual, deposited about 40k, made a decent amount of money, but went back to zero. FarmPal was fed up. He had already failed four times this year and didn't have any money in his portfolio. His only choice was to return to the usual. He deposited about $15,000 into his account. In a few weeks, he managed to take his account to 80k. He could cash out here and take the crazy gain, 
or he can risk losing it all again and go for gold. Farm Pal, of course, decided to go for gold, and finally, it seemed like the right decision. He would end December with $539,000 in his portfolio. Fifth times the charm, bust four times this year before going 45k to 600k. Story and comments. After months of selling put spreads and iron condors, GameStop had finally blessed him. FarmPal says that this account is play money. Now that he has over 500k in it, he will likely withdraw a large amount of it to lock in some gains. Hopefully, his portfolio doesn't fall back down to zero. PBS88, aka YOLO Trader, has been posting to Wall Street bets for over a year now, but his biggest post wouldn't be made until a few weeks ago. Early on in December, YOLO Trader decided to drop $650,000 on SPX calls that expired at the end of December. SPX was trading at $4,604, but his calls had a strike price of $4,775. This was quite alright though, because SPX would rally over the next week or two. SPX was trading at $4,768 and YOLO Trader was up just about 500 k on his position. At this point, selling wouldn't have been a bad idea, but YOLO Trader was already in too deep. He was going for a million dollar gain on this position. Unfortunately though, the next day, December 20th, was not a great day for SPX. The stock dropped to 4698 and continued to move in an unfavorable manner. The morning of the expiration rolled around and he was down 25% since purchasing these calls. Things would get even worse after about an hour into the trading day. SPX began selling off and these calls would inevitably expire worthless. Yellow Trader says that he's at a loss for words and is mad at himself for not taking profits along the way. In total, he sits at an astounding $649,000 loss. Easy Yogurt 4939 is a Wall Street Bets user who uses Invisalign. While on the journey for straighter teeth, Easy Yogurt realized that Invisalign was a good product. That being said, he dumped 40k into Invisalign calls that expired on January 5th. Invisalign needed to jump $17 for him to be break even on his position. On December 13th, Jerome Powell announced his expectation for cutting interest rates. Invisalign started to soar. Invisalign jumped 6.4% on December 13th and 11% on December 14th. It continued to rise two weeks later, which is when Easy Yogurt shares the following screenshot with us. Forgot to share my align YOLO. Easy Yogurt is up $214,000 for the day and $287,000 all time on his short term position. Took a screenshot when I sold, but I forgot to share this. Been wearing Invisalign for a year and a half now, like the product. Figured I might as well make some money out of it. Didn't expect JPOW to pump my bag this soon and this much. Long Wash here, aka the Dragon of Wall Street, is someone who felt confident in the company Robinhood. On January 9th, he would purchase 600 contracts that expired only three days later. These calls had the strike price of $11.50 and cost him $78 each. Robinhood was currently trading at about $12.20. So he was already in the money. The stock stayed pretty stagnant, but one day before expiration, it jumped up about 14%, which put him in the green by about $30,000. The only thing is that he was busy with something else while the stock was rallying. He decided to play Monster Hunter and the stock would fall 7% throughout the day. Went from being up 30k to losing it all because I decided to play Monster Hunter for 10 minutes instead of selling yesterday at open. 
Longwa Shear lost $47,000 in options and also lost some money on shares too. I'm sure you all have already heard of Boeing's major blunder. Many of their Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes had many issues, the most notorious being with one of its doors being open while in the air. This would cause the stock price to plummet. John Snow 4525 is a user who got puts on the company right before this whole fiasco unfolded. Being up 1000% for the month and 430% for the day, his portfolio now sits at $107,000. Job Itchy 9815 says, is anyone else having a very good last few weeks, Rainbow Bear? With only $432 in his portfolio on December 20th, Job Itchy really managed to turn things around. He achieved a $10,000 gain for the month and brought his portfolio to $11,000. But he also shows that he's down $5,000 for the year. Sakify is someone who we've covered in a previous video. He invested over 40k into AMC in the middle of November. And looking at a chart, we can see that he would be down about 43% by now. We don't know if he held on to this position though, because he stopped posting about AMC and started posting about SPY instead. On December 27th, Sakify posted SPY YOLO. We can see that he got a 30% gain for the day and made over $12,000. He states, my regarded self is done trading for a while. When he said he would be done for a while, it seems like he meant a very, very short while because he would place another risky trade only a few hours later. SPY rose about 0.18% for the day, but Sakify would lock in over $20,000 in gains. A 50% gain in a day is pretty darn lucky, but Sakify wasn't done testing his luck just yet. He would return to Wall Street bets a day later with day two of SPY scalping. SPY was pretty calm that day, rising only 18 cents, but Sakify managed to increase his portfolio by over $10,000 had lots of trade put in today, puts and calls, so won't be able to show all trades. Due to the volatility today, I'm done trading. So far, up 30k in two days. Sakify was up 72% for the week and he said he was done. He wouldn't be done for long though, because five days later, he would return with day four of spy scalping. Sakify was now up to nearly $82,000. He made 10k on this day, which is a 14% gain. Market still being choppy and have been playing mostly puts. For proof of trades, check out my previous posts. Hand heart emoji. So far, I have only taken one loss day, which was day 3 of down 1.5k. Sakify was up 96% for the week and he wasn't gonna give up just yet. Two days later, he would give us another update within the series with Day 6 of Spy Scalping. Sakify had managed to grow his portfolio to over $95,000. I'm finished trading, going to cash out all and leave 1k to trade to not get bored. For everyone wondering how to scalp, a simple YouTube video will explain it. I don't use any indicators or do technical analysis for my trades. My gains were truly off pure luck and timing. If you want to see proof of trades, simply ask in the replies. With a 129% gain for the past week and a half, Sakify's portfolio is just shy of six figures. It's good to see that he quit while he was ahead. He definitely came a long way from investing in AMC through Cash App. Function Initial is a user who had an unexpected change in his life. He was absent from work for two days in a row because of a rare autoimmune disease. His boss was apparently not rocking with this. Function Initial would be fired from his job and he was furious. 
After unexpectedly getting fired, Function Initial thought the best course of action would be to invest his money into options. This may sound like a risky thing to do, but Function Initial ended up turning a $3,400 investment into just about $16,000. He 4.7x'd his money and now has been offered a new job that he's interested in. This is already impressive, but a month before this, he was able to take 2.3k all the way up to 18k. Function Initial says, I was fired for discriminatory reasons at my job and decided to trade, turned 3,000 into 16k, and last month 2.3k to 18k. Thanks for firing me? Question mark? Function Initial debates becoming a full-time trader, which usually never ends well, but so far, he seems to be doing pretty well. Frankie Fasthands19 is a user who shared Nike Puts YOLO. In this screenshot, we see that he spent about 6k on these contracts and they were expiring only a day later. Nike was trading at $122.53. He needed the stock to drop 7% in a day just to break even. Frankie would go to sleep and prepare for his battle on Friday. Frankie woke up on Friday to amazing news. Nike reported earnings and they were not looking so hot. Nike would fall 11.82% and Frankie's portfolio would take off. Frankie seems to be a humble investor. He didn't follow up with a gain screenshot after predicting Nike's plummet, but it's safe to say that he secured an amazing profit. This all sounds like amazing news, and it is. But on the day right before his Nike YOLO, he also YOLO'd some money into some other puts. Frankie pretty much matched his Nike YOLO and invested about 5.7k into Micron Technology puts that expired on Friday. Micron Technology was trading at 78.73, and he needed the stock to drop down to 74.95 to break even. Frankie says, hoping MU crashes after earnings. Wish me luck. PimpVic3 approaches and says, you. I'ma buy calls because of this post. Pimp Vic boasts a screenshot of a $20 YOLO into calls on the company. Both users were confident in their decisions. The earnings report would come out a few hours later, and to the dismay of Frankie, Micron Technology had beaten expectations. The stock rocketed 8.6% the next day, and Frankie's puts would be obliterated. 6k would go down the drain with this trade, but hopefully his gain with Nike covered his losses with Micron Technology. IR God says closed Mara position today, approximately $500,000 gain in the last 30 days. IR God achieved a 65.27% gain for the past month, which brings his portfolio to nearly 1.3 mil. What's up, boys? I GTFO of everything today. Year to date gains well over a mil. Made roughly 500k with Mara options, plus about 100k from Riot options. See my last post for Mara positions. Tried to post about my position yesterday, but it got taken down. Was up approximately 250k at the peak. Market closed up about 80k yesterday. Got out today, up about 75k for the day. After making a 7 figure gain with crypto related stocks, he decided that it was time to flip the switch. He transformed from a bull to a bear and acquired 100k worth of puts on Mara. After holding these puts for about two weeks, he started to get worried. It was January 8th and Mara was still trading at 2598. That being said, he decided to sell these puts for a $30,000 loss. 
Two days after selling, the Bitcoin ETF acceptance news got out, and the price of Bitcoin would begin to fall. Mara fell 32.4% within five days of him selling, so it's safe to say he should have waited a bit before letting go of his puts. Regardless though, he still made an insane profit overall. Mr. Krusty Socks is someone who has quite the history on Wall Street bets. Two years ago, he turned $69 to $4,600 in just one week. Back in June, he got a $44,000 gain with Adobe. In July, he got an $11,000 gain with Robinhood. And overall, his account history shows a whole lot of green days. This would take a turn in 2024. On the first of the year, he posted 20k save calls. He invested nearly 25k in calls on the company Spirit Airlines. The stock was currently trading at 1639, but he needed it to go up to 2791 to break even. Mr. Krusty Socks wasn't too worried though, because there was a rumor that JetBlue was going to buy them out. Three days before the expiration of these contracts, news would come out. JetBlue's $3.8 billion buyout of Spirit Airlines blocked by Judge, citing threat to competition. This was horrendous news for Mr. Krusty Socks. Spirit would go from 1536 to just 586 in 20 minutes. That's a 61.85% decrease. It's safe to say that Mr. Krusty Socks won't be breaking even on these contracts. Speaking of Spirit Airlines, let's move on to the tale of Stolen Shoelace. On November 29th, he would share the following to Wall Street bets. 15k gain so far from save. When this deal goes through, this position will be worth a cool 88.6k. Hindsight is always 2020, but obviously, Stolen Shoelace wouldn't be up on his position for long. On January 16th, he would return to Wall Street bets with sad news. Nothing can save me now. From being up 24k to being down 13k. Instead of his position being worth 88k like he said, it was now worthless. Well, it was a fun ride. I think we all knew that the Spirit Airlines deal was a coin flip from the start. Just sad that it didn't go our way. Also, these stupid spread have no liquidity, so it is impossible to close this position. Perfect Software 4358 is someone who managed to achieve an insane gain with only $26. On January 16th, Perfect Software would purchase a call on SMCI. Super Microcomputer Incorporated would report earnings pretty soon. His call had the strike price of $345 and would expire on January 19th. The stock dropped 12% over the next two days, and things were looking horrendous. He originally spent $900 on the call, but it was now worth a measly $26. At this point, he was looking for a miracle. Luckily for him, it was January 19th, and the stock price started to turn around. AI computer maker Supermicro Hikes Outlook stock soars. SMCI rose a whopping 36% that day, skyrocketing his call to a value of over $6,600. Perfect Software went from being down 97% to being up 618% in the matter of just three days. Perfect Software's gain is outstanding, but he's not the only one who got lucky with SMCI. PCC Brown is someone who originally had a mediocre portfolio. With just about $100, things weren't looking entirely promising. PCC Brown had his eyes set on SMCI and yellowed $95 into the company on January 16th. Three days later, we all know what happened. Up 8,675% for the day, PCC Brown managed to take $95 to over $3,900. Thank you, SMCI. 
My first one. Whoa, it feels so good. $95 into 4K. Sword High is someone who hasn't been as lucky as these two. Lost near 25K in the past month. The thought of it makes me want to move to Alaska and quit life. Sword High is down $25,000 over the past month and obviously isn't too happy about it. Old time lurker around here before WBS got mainstream. If you think you have an edge, think again. Lol, nobody does. Only on Spy one day till expirations. Oh, let's not forget the thousands of dollars in commission fees over the past few months. Poor again. Not that those 25k makes you rich, but it does when you think now much more wisely you could have used it. Confident Curve 4672 takes all this information and throws it out the window. He had $44 to spare and wanted to turn it into a small fortune. Humana was trading at $450 a share, and Confident Curve felt like this was outrageous. That being said, he used the $44 to purchase a put that expired on January 26th. This put had a strike price of $420, so it was pretty likely that this put would expire worthless. Suddenly, news would come out in Confident Curve's favor. Humana stock falls after reporting higher costs, dragging down other Medicare Advantage providers. Humana would drop over 12% at market open. This sent his put flying to a value of 3090. Confident Curve wouldn't wait too long and ended up selling this put for 2951. Typical Buffalo 1878 was not your average trader. 2024 just started and he was looking for a way to lock in consistent profit. He had just under 200k in his Robinhood account so he could easily make some pretty good passive income by putting that into an index fund. But obviously, no one's gonna do that on this subreddit. Typical Buffalo would trade zero day till expiration SPY options with tight strike prices. SPY was a bit rocky during this time period, but Typical Buffalo managed to grow his portfolio to $559,000 a 186% gain is insane. Would typical Buffalo call it quits with over half a million dollars? Would he throw it into an index fund and ensure a safe retirement? Obviously not. Determined to continue his streak of luck, he opened up Robinhood for another day of risky trades. Little did he know, this day would mark the end of his streak. Typical Buffalo was feeling like a bear and opened up some puts. Spy kept rising and he decided to buy more puts. Spy was rallying and showed no signs of slowing down. Typical Buffalo would buy more puts, but eventually he faced reality. His portfolio was down 56% and he had lost over $314,000 for the day. He says, I thought we would see a pullback at some point, but this rally today was just too strong. I gave up and glad I did or this would be a lot worse. Writing this here as a reminder to myself that a win is a win and a loss is a loss, but chasing anything is a loser. Only good news is that I'm still up 25% year to date, still determined to see this account hit $1 million, but clearly need to slow down and regroup. Hopefully typical Buffalo stops the risky trades. But only time will tell if he implements a safer strategy to his Robin Hood portfolio. Huge shout out to Miguel Hazler, 2008 Ford Fusion, HCF8, and Wilson Wong for subscribing to the Diamond Tier on Patreon. Make sure to join if you want to be featured in future videos.